Hey guys, welcome to session four, Keys to Breakthrough 40-Day Prayer Challenge. I know you've been enjoying your life group, and I've been enjoying mine. I know I'm sitting out here with the mountains in the background. You may be able to see them, you may not be able to, but they're there. And I'm thinking about how many times that some prayers and some areas of breakthrough seem like a mountain to us. But Jesus gave us a prayer pattern to pull down those mountains. He said we could say to those mountains be removed. And so he gave us a prayer pattern. So today I want to pick up where we left off last week with session two. We did the first five steps last week and I'm going to pick up with step six today. So here it is. Get your notes out. Get ready to write it. Step six is I admit my faults. I admit my faults. This is called the prayer of cleansing, the prayer of cleansing. And Jesus said, pray, forgive us our sins. It's like I'm praying, God, search my heart. Are the things in me that are not like you sins uh, that, that hinder my relationship with you? And, and sometimes we, we try to hide them, but isn't it amazing? God already knows them, and he wants us to confess them, to keep a short list. God promises, listen to this, God promises that if you will confess your sins to him, he will forgive you instantly, freely, completely, and permanently. Because God doesn't want you to carry guilt. He wants you to be free. Uh, people who carry guilt run from God, and it leads to fear, always living in fear that, that I have this secret sin in my life. But God wants you to be free. I, I love 1 John 1 and 9. It says, if we confess our sins to God, he can always, I love that translation, he can always be trusted to forgive us and take away our sins. In other words, he is dependable, always. What does that mean? It means always. If I sin and sin and sin again in the same area and I ask him to forgive me, will, will he do that? Yeah, he, he will do that a whole lot more than you're willing to ask him. The result of confessing our sin is found in Psalm 32 verses 1 through 5 from the Living Bible. David said, what happiness for those whose guilt has been forgiven. What joys when sins are covered over. What relief for those who have confessed their sins and God has cleared their record. There was a time when I wouldn't admit the sinner I was, but my dishonesty made me miserable and filled my days with frustration. All day and all night your hand was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water on a sunny day until I finally admitted all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. I said to myself, I will confess them to the Lord and you forgave me and all my guilt is gone. Wow, all the regrets, all the guilt is gone. But now there's one condition to this and it's actually step seven. Step seven says, I release those who have hurt me. It's called the prayer of release the prayer of release. As we forgive those who sin against us, man, that's the hardest part, isn't it? To forgive, Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. But yet you say, but they've never asked me to forgive them. It's the hard part. They've offended me. They've hurt me. They've, uh, they've abused me and it's not fair. But listen, forgiveness is not about fairness. Forgiveness is all about grace. The first thing to learn of how to forgive others is to remember how much that we have been forgiven by God. It's not based on fairness. God wiped away our sins. Ephesians 4 and 32 says, Be kind and tenderhearted to one another and forgive one another as God has forgiven you through Christ. One man came up to John Wesley once and said, Sir, I don't believe your message on forgiveness because I just could never forgive someone who and Wesley said, well, I hope, sir, then you never sin. You will never have to forgive anyone more than God has already forgiven you. Matthew 6 and 14 and 15 says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you're hurt, you have two options. Either you can relive that or you can release it. If you relive it and you perpetually record it and play it over and over and over, it keeps bringing up that pain. But releasing that hurt is a path to inner peace. 
I've known people that for 20 years, they keep rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing that hurt. And it's as real to them today as it ever was. But 20 years ago, they could have relieved, they could have, re they could have released that and they could have found the peace of the Lord. The scripture says, love keeps no record of wrongs. Are you keeping a record of wrongs in your marriage or with your friends? We forgive. Step eight, I ask God to guard my heart. This is called the prayer of protection. The prayer of protection. And it, Jesus said, pray like this, lead us not into temptation. So I'm saying, Lord, now that you've forgiven me, don't let me do that again. Please, Lord, protect me. Help me to get my eyes off of that thing that keeps tempting me and makes me fall. But you know what? Temptation is not always about doing wrong things. Temptation sometimes is not doing the right thing. There's a called the sin of commission, which I do something, or the sin of omission, something I should have done, but I didn't do. We're often tempted, listen, to do the easy thing, not the right thing. Or we're tempted to only do what's best for me. Or we're tempted to do what's the unimportant and not the important. Or we're tempted to just do things later. I'll do it next week. That's procrastination, right? Or we're tempted to ignore the needs of others. But we need to simply say, Lord, I want you to guard my heart that I don't keep falling into the same areas of temptation. And step nine is I depend on God's power. Step nine is I depend on God's power. This is called the prayer of deliverance. Jesus said, pray like this, deliver us from evil. This is when I'm in over my head and I can't handle it. And uh, what I'm going through is not in my own strength and I need God's power. Now, before I get to step 10, I'd like for us to review. So pull out your notes from last week and let's just review this pattern. Listen, if there, ha if there was a better pattern for prayer, don't you think Jesus would have given it to us? But this prayer contains everything that you'll ever need in life and the things that God wants us to have. So step one, let's quickly review. It's the prayer of connection, our Father. And here we remember how much God loves us, that he's adopted us into his family, that he is a caring, consistent, capable, and a close Father to us. Number two, the prayer of refocusing. Hallowed be your name. This is where I tell God how much that I love him. I do it by remembering all of his names. He's uh, our savior, our creator, my healer, my sustainer, my comforter. Uh, he's my, my guard. He's my shepherd. And I just take time to thank him for those things. Step three is the prayer of cooperation. I offer my life to be used for God's purposes. Thy kingdom come. We're just simply saying, Lord, here's a dangerous prayer, two-word prayer, use me, use me. Step four is a prayer of surrender. God, I give you my pain, I give you my sorrow. I pray that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, I want to live out the plan that you have for me on this planet earth. Step five is a prayer of dependence. Lord, I'm depending on you. I trust you to meet all of my needs. Here we pray, give us our daily bread. Step six is a prayer of cleansing. I admit my sins. Forgive my sins, Lord. I'm honest. I, I bring them out into the open. And step seven is a prayer of release. I release everyone who's ever hurt me. I, I totally release them as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Step eight is a prayer of protection. I ask God to protect my heart lead me not into temptation. And step nine is, this, is, this, is the prayer of deliverance. I depend on God's power to deliver me from evil. I'm not depending upon myself, but I'm depending upon him. And now, step 10. Step 10 is I praise God for ultimate victory. I've read the end of the book and God wins. And if God wins, then we win also. This is the prayer of victory. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
The Lord's Prayer ends where it begins, with the glory of God. Jesus is teaching us that the ultimate aim of our prayers is that God would be glorified no matter the outcome. Remember the scripture that said that the Father may be glorified in the Son when we ask Him and the prayers that we ask for are answered? The purpose of prayer is not to conform God to my way of seeing things, but to conform my life and my ways to His way. And if I conform to that, then it's for his kingdom, his power, and his glory. We align ourselves with him. And finally, Psalm 115 says, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory, because of your love and your faithfulness. Well, I know you're now getting ready to go into your discussion time tonight, but before you do that, I want us to go back where we first started when we looked at this model prayer. And I'd like for us to pray the prayer found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Let's read it together, all right? Follow along. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Say it with me. Amen. Well, enjoy your small group now. I've got some great questions for you to discuss. God bless you. I'll see you next week.